Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. We have a great show for you tonight. Uh, Nikki Davis is here along with Tim Pate. Roman Price. And Price. Roman Price. There you go. So, uh, they, Nikki and Roman and Tim will all be at our Hempstead World Music Festival coming up in just uh, another week. So, uh, we'll be talking more about that in a moment. We have a uh, brief but informative hemp news segment and a lot of video clips for you tonight. So, stay tuned as we bring on our infamous dancing cannabis leaves. I feel the force. have some hip news for you tonight. The main story of the week is the introduction by uh, Representative Barney Frank, a Democrat from Massachusetts, and Representative Ron Paul, a Republican from Texas, of a bill to legalize marijuana by the federal government and allow states to regulate the sale of marijuana. It still would be illegal to ship it interstate, and uh, but it would allow states to start legally regulate marijuana as we're attempting to do in Oregon and as is a new initiative launched this week in Washington State by a new organization called New Approach, uh, which would also regulate the sale of marijuana. The bill in Washington proposes to regulate it through a, uh, uh, the state liquor stores where our Oregon program would create a separate set of stores for cannabis. But uh, there's another initiative in Washington as well, the Sensible Washington Initiative. It's got a month to go in there. Petition drive to just remove all criminal sanctions from marijuana in Washington state. It also appears there'll be a bill in California, an initiative and an initiative in Colorado. So uh, we'll have at least four states voting on legalizing marijuana in the year 2012. And uh, uh, so the federal bill introduced by Representative Barney Frank and uh, Representative Ron Paul, it's uh, House Bill 2301. This bill will uh, allow our states to do that. So uh, it's a kind of a long shot bill, but it's been getting a lot of publicity. So uh, that's the news in brief this week. We're going to jump over to uh, our musical ensemble. Hello, folks. Good evening. Hello. How you doing, Paul? Very well. Welcome, Roman. It's good to have you on the show. And Nikki Davis. Thank you, sir. It's great to be here. We're excited about the festival coming up. Great. Yeah, we had a film clip in your living room from last week, and I think we'll be running that a little bit later here, too. And hi, Tim. Good evening. And yeah, we've had an exciting week, actually, in our own business as far as the, the Hempstead World Music Festival is concerned. We yeah, were, you spoke, both of you did, at we, the we uh, did. City Council on we Thursday. We had, a, we had a hearing before the City Council. We had uh, uh, the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Association challenged and uh, an, they put an appeal forth to uh, try and stop the concert. And we won a unanimous decision by the City Council on Thursday. So I was very pleased uh, to have uh, that happen. And so now we can announce, you know, just eight days before the show or so, you know, please go ahead and get some tickets if you can. And uh, so we should say that we do have a benefit show coming up at the Washington Park uh, Rose Garden Amphitheater yep. on the 4th of July. So uh, we have Toots and the Maytals. Miss Nikki Davis here will also be performing as will Dubtonic Crew, a band from Jamaica. We have, have a clip with them. Uh, in a moment as well, and uh, Rhythm Culture, and John Trudell and Bad Dog, good friends of mine and a Native American legend and American hero. But uh, we're going to let you guys play some music. Nikki has a song for us, so we've decided to let her stand forth tonight. Come on, Nick. Mm -hmm. I 
had a man I'm a simple kind of woman Need me a simple kind of man One that'll rock me all night long And love me till the break of dawn I'm a sweet loving woman Got to find me a sweet loving man I'm a sweet loving woman Need me a sweet loving man One that can tease me and please me Like no other can Come on, baby, get closer to me Put your lips to mine, honey, make me weak in my knees Yeah, now, baby, I aim to be pleased I need more love and then a one-night tease But I'm a simple kind of woman Need me a simple kind of man I'm a Baby, got to find me a sweet loving man One that'll rock me and love me Like no other can One that'll tease me and please me Like no other man One that'll rock me and roll me like no other man can. Ooh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> nice job, Nikki. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that is uh, Miss Nikki Davis, Roman, and uh, Tim Payton. We have a video clip from Atlanta, Georgia, on the bus with Toots Hibbert of Toots and the Maytals. We'll be rolling that in just a moment so <laughs> as but I also want to introduce our new guest hey Jennifer it's good Hello, to see Tom. you welcome Jennifer is our petition coordinator for the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act petition and the uh, campaign manager that's the official title I should say <laughs> and Mr. Tim Page. that's me so uh, we're gonna roll a couple clips here with uh, uh, now where were you when you took this clip in Atlanta Georgia okay in Atlanta, Georgia, it was a hot night. And now he's been touring so all over the country. So it was Atlanta, New Orleans. Uh, he he's was, been all he's over. Been in Denver. He's been, yeah, he's been, been at the uh, Sierra. I think he's doing Nevada. 80 cities in 90 oh, nights. That's hard to believe now. He's like 68 years old. Well, he's doing three know? cities for us And he three looks nights. like he's about 40. You know, he's uh, in incredible shape. But, You'd uh, think that that'd be enough, be but as soon as that. he finishes our shows, he's headed straight off another show. We have this little clip we got with him in the back of the bus. So stand by. Yeah, hi, Reggae fans. I want to big up the cannabis common sense out there. I'm coming to give you the reggae atmosphere. Yeah, it's a festival jam jam. Just for the meters. Same full prescription. Give it to me one time. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We look forward to it. Fourth okay. of July is portion. Yeah, man. All right. So that was in Atlanta with Toots Hibbert, who invented the word reggae. He'll be playing a series of shows with us coming up on uh, the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of July. And I know you've been hard at work, including in front of the city council this week. Well, we've had a lot of uh, effort put in, a lot mm -hmm. of people, uh, but uh, this week it all culminated in that, that effort before the city council. So, so they voted unanimously they in favor of uh, yes. confirming our sound permit. That is correct, and thing. we move forward. And, and we work with the city closely to make certain that we have a good show and that you know, everybody gets there and gets home safely. And you know, we have a lot of plans that are involved with that. I wish everybody, if they come, to please carpool. Uh, we will be having shuttle buses up to the max up at the zoo. I found out uh, that there's a, a real possibility the zoo is going to allow us to do a park and ride at the zoo parking lot. And mm -hmm. so uh, we will have some extra parking on top of what we've already arranged for up there. So just come. 
and be ready for a good day. Yeah, because yeah, it it's will on be. the fourth of July here in Portland. Uh, it's up in uh, or down in Eugene on the second of July. That's a Saturday at the uh, Lane County Fairground, and on the third of July in the Deschutes County Fairground in Redmond near Bend. And so uh, then the 4th of July right here in Washington Park's Rose Garden Amphitheater. For more information, you can uh, go to Tickets Oregon and enter toots in there, ticketsoregon.com. It's a benefit for our Hemp Stock Festival and our petition to legalize marijuana and restore hemp. So we're very hopeful that we'll sell tickets and be able to uh, f help fund our initiative drive. This is a uh, benefits of the money that often goes to the promoter is actually going to fund those two things, our petition drive to legalize cannabis and uh, our hemp stock festival. I get, when I'm out in the public, and, and I'm sure Paul does too, we get requests from people that just say, what can I do, what can I do? I, I hear that as often as, as I wake up, I think. I would like for you to understand this is what you can do. This, yeah. is, a, this is your opportunity come to, to come and help. So our, uh, this is uh, concerts chance. in these parks. Nikki, you wanted to say something here? Well, I just wanted to share with everybody that there's also going to be an international bazaar, so there's lots of great hemp products to check out. And um, we've got some great hemp beer that's going to be available in our beer and wine uh, little garden area that we have there. And uh, the artists all have CDs, and there's great food. There is uh, traditional American Fourth of July barbecue, and there's going to be ice cream, and Mexican food and a th uh, Thai food. So it's not just the music, you get a whole atmosphere created here. And Kink is proudly uh, presenting this uh, That's true. show in the park. So we feel really, really honored and we feel really grateful for everybody that's just coming on board. It's amazing. It's, and our man of the hour, Tim Pate, is just phenomenal. All right. Well, thank, thank you, Nikki. So uh, we have one more clip we'll be running from Dubtonic Crew, which is a great Jamaican uh, band. This is in Nikki's living room just good last cooks week. Global yeah. Battle of the MTV Award winners out of yeah. 6,000 bands. They won, won an place. MTV Award as the best new band in the world just, uh, what, about four or five months ago. Yeah, in so Malaysia. This is Dubtonic Crew. Here they are. Down, down. Okay, whenever you guys are ready, it's going. Well, people can have this common sense. This is Dr. Nico, live in Lake Oswego, Portland, Oregon. You know what I mean? Give thanks to the gathering. Common sense. Dr. Nico, we have some yeah. You don't know, Dr. Nico representing. Tim representing, Nicky Davis representing, and this is the Hempstead World Music Festival family gathered right here at Lake Oswego. And guess what now, right now, look at Dub Talent Crew is representing, coming in from Jamaica for the Hempstead World Music Festival family. We're well, gonna do something for all of the band Jamaicans. What you say? Yeah, you said it, you. Born Jamaican, yo. Dope Tony Korean Jamaican, yo. Yeah, I'm loving and kind with the warmest smile. Well, he's a fashion full of class and style. We are born Jamaican, yo. Dope Tony Korean Jamaican, yo. Yeah, I'm loving and kind with the warmest smile. Sunshine world, with my sunshine. 
So much fun. <laughs> Dub Tonic Crew. And for more information, you can go to one of two websites. One is Hempstead World Music Festival. That's H E M P S T A D, World Music Festival.com. Or you can go buy tickets directly at ticketsoregon.com. That's ticketsoregon.com for tickets to the second, third, and fourth of July shows that we'll have in Eugene, Redmond, and here in Portland's. Washington Park Rose Garden. And Music Millennium. Oh yeah, that's true. You can get tickets at Music Millennium in Portland, Constant Gardener in Eugene, and Ranch Records in Bend. Okay. Enough pushing that concert for the moment. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Let's push the petition. petition. Welcome again. Yes. Welcome again. <laughs> so this is uh, Jennifer Alexander, and she's our uh, campaign manager for the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act, and we're just launching a big petition drive. We've had three or four people working for the drive, and now we're, we're increasing that to uh, 24. More like 24 people. <laughs> so we're in the process of hiring drive. a lot of people right now. We've got most of those positions filled, Good. so if people are still interested, you can send your resume, but I think we've got them filled now. Um, if you are interested, you can send your resume to jen at cannabistaxact.org, just in case we do have openings open up in the short term near future. Um, but what we're really pushing for right now is to get them out on the streets petitioning. We're going to be traveling this week from um, Eugene, uh, Grants Pass in Medford area, as well as Bend, and meeting up with the pay petitioners and the volunteers in each area. I'm working on finalizing the location in Bend. I think the Eugene location is still sound. We're waiting to get confirmation. They they may have to relocate the location we were using, so we may not get to use that one. So. The Medford Grants Pass volunteer meeting is still firm, and that one's at the THCF clinic down there. We're going to be meeting next Wednesday, probably at about 11 o'clock in the morning. And volunteers in that area are encouraged to come down and get petitions and ask questions and, and get better equipped to get out there and help get the signatures. In Eugene, where we were looking at the Voter Power Building at 687 River Avenue, um, but that's temporarily on hold until tomorrow, and I'll be able to confirm it for sure. Um, and then in Bend, where we have a, a location lined up that I need to confirm, a community center out there. So I'll be letting all of our volunteers on our mailing list know those locations by email in the coming days. So if you're not a volunteer already, sign up on our webpage and you'll know exactly where to find us. Um, that's the Cannabis Tax Act, or I'm sorry, www.cannabistaxact.org slash volunteer and sign up and that'll put you on the list and you'll get the complete list of everywhere we'll be and when. We're trying to get uh, qualified for the ballot by September of this year. We have until July of next year, but we want plenty of time to campaign for this. So we want to be qualified by September of this year. So the paid petitioners are going to help with that, but I'm really trying to promote the volunteer effort as well. We want the public to see this as something Oregonians want. I, I mean, it's very evident to me out in the field that Oregonians do want this, <laughs> but we want the public to recognize that. And the more volunteers that we have, the more likely they'll be aware that this was something that we all wanted. Um, so if you're supportive of this cause, you should definitely, you know, sign up to be a volunteer, get a sheet, get two sheets, any, every bit helps. For more information, you can go to 
CannabisTaxAct.org, right there on the screen. That's CannabisTaxAct.org. You can print out a petition and uh, uh, directly sing a single signature sheet that you can sign individually and mail or take into our office on uh, Northeast Sandy. Or you can uh, volunteer and have us mail you uh, petitions so you can actually gather signatures to end adult marijuana prohibition and restore industrial hemp. You can find out more information there at CannabisTaxAct.org. And if that seems to be too much for you, come on by 2712 Northeast Sandy and I'll let you sign my petition. There you go. That works too. That works too. So uh, in a moment, uh, we're going to uh, have a call with the producer of a new movie, Hempsters uh, Plant the Seed, that's just being released uh, uh, this week and we have a film clip we'll be running for that but for now you know we do take viewers phone calls and we have a caller who's been patiently standing by wow so welcome to our show caller hello hello Howdy. you're on the air yes uh, i was wondering when and where is the hemp stock going to take place it's going to be at kelly point park okay. on uh saturday and sunday september 10th and 11th uh, uh, right here in River City, way out at the end of uh, uh, Marine Drive. Marine Drive. And so that's on September 10th and 11th at Kelly Point Park at the convergence of the Willamette and Columbia River. So there's the, the Kaiser Hospital right across the street there? No, there's no. nothing really across no. the street <laughs> except uh, Water, okay. uh, you, there's Sophie's Islands across the river and oh, okay. far uh, uh, Washington State's across the river. And it's way out there past the, uh, uh, the uh, piers that they have, or the loading areas, uh, the Port of Portland's uh, docks. Put your boat for... in the water <coughs> and go out to the end of the Willamette and we'll be right there. Oh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. You bet. Go, go to Marine Drive and, and head west as far as you can go and we'll be there. That's okay. right. Either That's way. way. I'll keep my uh, nose open for you. There is not boat parking, but you can oh, cast well, you can. an anchor. Yeah, you there can you go. There, yeah, there's... there's no pier at the park. <laughs> we have no pier at that park. It's true. Now, we that's did have a, a couple of sites that had piers in the past, but that's, true. that's another story. That is, you're right. You're right. So what is our petition count up to now? Can you say officially, or what's As our of last, last count? Monday, we haven't added since Monday. As of Monday, it was just over 12,000. I think it was like 12,200 and something. But we've been collecting signatures all week, and we'll have another count next Monday. Mm -hmm. um, I update every Monday. So <laughs> in the middle of the week, it's hard to say exactly how many today. But Monday, I'll have another firm count. But So Monday uh, the 20th is the date you have, today being Monday the 24th. Is that the yes, exactly. current Monday, Monday the, 20th. the 20th at 12? Just over 12,200 or so. Yeah, and we've received some nice envelopes from volunteers since then. So yeah. there's there's a nice little chunk of those. And then we've had our, the paid petitioners. Uh, volunteer uh, John Walsh did like 593 500. signatures yes. in five days. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that gets added to it. Those are not yeah. in that count yet. And, and, and he he's brought still 250 going. up from <laughs> Southern Oregon yes. when, he, when he came up, too. And we have a couple of other people out there that have quite a few. Um, the the lady down in Eugene that I told you about before with a nice chunk, she had some help getting that chunk, she says. But but they, they still have well over 800 down there to submit as well. All right. We have another phone call. Welcome to our show, caller. Hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, Michael Henning here. Hi, Michael. How are you? Good, Paul. It's been a long time. How are you doing? It has been. <laughs> now, Michael is the producer of this new movie that's just come out, Hempsters Plant the Seed, for our well, very long-time viewers. Wait, 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 time out. Director. 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 Hey, yes, <laughs> get it okay. right. What did I say? This I don't even different. remember. You said producer. Okay, the director. I know those are important titles. I don't want to mess that up. Okay, the director. But you've been working on this for a number of years. I remember you came here to Portland back in, was it 2003? I think so. Yeah, 2003, and... You uh, were working on editing it then in conjunction with the local film school, is yeah. that right? Yeah, we, we actually uh, uh, were awarded not one, but two film grants that uh, allowed me to go to uh, the AVID film camp in Portland where uh, editors were being trained to use the AVID system. Mm -hmm. And in, in uh, a trade-off, I was able to get the first edits done on this film. I see, I see. 
And it's won some awards and things. You want to tell us a little bit more about it? Well, uh, let's see. We, we, it's a kind of an interesting, it's almost funny, award. It's called the Best Work in Progress at the uh, Deep Ellum <laughs> Film Festival. I don't think there's any other festival to do Best Work in Progress, but uh, now that we have full distribution, I think they gave the reward to the right people because we uh, our work in progress is now a finished work, and we have full distribution through... Uh, Cinema Libre Studios, which just distributed uh, uh, Oliver Stone's South of the Border, so they're they're, they're quite a formidable uh, documentary company. Yeah, that and, is uh, wonderful. We're just getting started. That is wonderful to hear. You've got distribution through that major uh, distributor. So the, it's just come out on CD. Was it just yesterday or today that it was released on not CD DVD? No, right? it, 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 it comes out next. This coming Tuesday, June 28th, is the official release date. I see, I see. Yeah, so everybody can kind of uh, put that on their calendars, and we'll be everywhere. We're on iTunes, uh, Amazon, Hulu, uh, Netflix, Redbox. You'll, you'll find it everywhere. And uh, we're well, using we play the clips of... hemp leaf as our emblem. We played clips. You've got Woody Harrelson in this video as he planted four hemp seeds in Kentucky. I was actually there that day back on June 1st of 1996. Wow. He'd had a big hemp conference in Lexington the day before, two days, for two days prior to that. And so uh, it's a long story. I won't give any more details on that. But you also have uh, Alex Whiteplume of the Sioux Nation who, who planted industrial hemp. You want to talk about some of the people profiled in yeah, yeah, plant I, mean, the seed? I, I think that's the most fascinating thing about all this is that every activist that we focused on, and we had we focused on seven different activists, and and then of course they had their allies backing them backing them up. But every one of them had a different agenda, and hemp was the was the was the was the linchpin that they used to uh, get their point across. For example, um, the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, the Lakota Sioux. They have a treaty from 1868 that says they have sovereignty. Well, to prove that they have sovereignty, uh, they used hemp as the uh, as the proof. Like, well, they're growing hemp in Canada, 60 miles north, so they said we'll grow hemp and prove that we have sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Drug Enforcement Agency wouldn't allow it, and they came in and cut down their their crop. Uh, Julia Butterfly was uh, protesting the. Uh, deforestation of the ancient redwoods. She so lived she on top of a redwood for two years so they wouldn't cut it down there, an old growth tree. Yeah, a 2,000 year old tree and she's living in it and her message in the film is that hemp, as she says, it's not the alternative, it's the solution for cutting down ancient trees for paper because hemp makes great paper. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know this, but the first two drafts of the of the uh, Declaration of Independence, Independence was written on hemp paper. You know, so, Michael? You know, it's not new. It's been around forever. Yeah. I'd like you to stand by. We're going to play the trailer from this uh, new film, Hempsters Plant the Seed, and we'll be back to, to talk to you a little bit more after that. Great. Thanks. One of the biggest uh, problems facing the legalization of industrial hemp is its confusion with uh, marijuana, uh, which is, you know, really a distant cousin. This is a feral tested industrial hemp seed. You know, from what little planting I've done, I think that should germinate. Do you realize you're under Yes, sir. The petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist elite, son of a bitch, to utilize the lawmaking powers of Congress to get through legislation which has criminalized the farmer who's gone into competition with these synthetic manufacturers. The DEA's intrusion into the realm of agriculture is preventing American farmers from growing a crop that has the potential to help address the global depletion of forest resources, the dependency on foreign oil, the harmful effects of petrochemicals, the excessive use of pesticides for fiber crops, of Why is it that everything that is good for our bodies, our communities, and our planet called an alternative? An alternative to what? Hemp is the number one fiber, the number one fuel, the number one food, and number one medicine. We have to change our language and not allow all right, that is a clip from Hempster's Plant Seed. Are you still there, Michael? Oh, yeah. All right, it uh, looks like a great film. 
Well, we're getting a lot of good uh, feedback. Somebody in the Bob Marley camp, and we don't know who it was, posted our trailer on um, on Bob Marley's Facebook wall. Yeah, Ziggy Marley <laughs> came out with a great new song called Wild and Free. That's an anthem for cannabis, and uh, it's a wonderful new song. And he's just issued a comic book also called Marijuana Man. So Ziggy okay. Marley is coming out strongly to aid the fight to uh, end marijuana prohibition. And so uh, uh, I know their whole camp is, is starting to aid. And, and Ziggy also performed at the National Normal Convention back on April 20th in Denver, Colorado. So uh, he's coming well, they, out to aid really, the cause uh, as more and more of us come out of the cannabis closet and uh, take up the work to uh, end marijuana prohibition, restore industrial hemp, and uh, establish what I like to call global cannabis freedom. And your film is a great documentary of uh, uh, some crucial activists working in this. Well, you, you know, they, they apparently they really enjoyed the trailer because we had uh, fourteen thousand likes in three hours, and wow. in uh, six hours we had nineteen thousand. In one day we had thirty-five thousand views. I think uh, I think that shows that there's a lot of people interested in this, and and a lot of the the the, the marijuana lobby actually doesn't know about the industrial side. And yeah. I thought that was pretty fascinating when I read the, the comments that were written, that uh, you would think that would be known, but once they find that out, it's just more, uh, it's more ammo to prove that the most valuable plant on the earth is uh, it's grown in 30 countries, but you can't grow it here. Well, it's ironic Amazing. that the plant that makes the most fuel, makes the most fiber, and makes the most food, and the most medicine, is the one that they prohibited and uh, lied about and, uh, uh, you know, portrayed as the demon weed. And really it's the, uh, the agricultural savior of our economy. And so yeah, we're trying yeah, to yeah. establish that in our Oregon Cannabis Tax Act petition. We have a petition drive going right now to end adult marijuana prohibition. And so, uh, you know, and we just had Gatewood Galbraith here on the show about three, four weeks ago. Uh, really? Well, yeah, he came out from you Kentucky. Think, the thing I love about Gatewood is that of all the activists we follow in the film, he's the only one who steps up and says, look, it's the same plan. We want yeah. to see it legalized in all of its aspects. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what we're trying to do here in Oregon. Is, uh, we're, we're, you know, I really believe that uh, when we end adult marijuana prohibition that, and allow hemp to resume its rightful place in our economy, that uh, high THC hemp will be producing huge amounts of biodiesel, hundreds of gallons per acre, oh, in yeah. addition to the ethanol production. So it's going to really wipe out the need for petrochemicals. You know, it, it amazes me that it can pr produce both. I didn't know this before, but the oil from the seed is biodiesel, and the cellulose from the herd can create ethanol. Yeah. There's no other plant on Earth that can do that, and yet it's prohibited here, but they grow it in 30 countries. So have to start asking yourself what's going on and what i found out it's is all about money agency. it's all about money and power and the further centralization of economic and political control well the dea is making a dollar five per plant for every so-called marijuana plant they turn in for the drug enforcement agency's uh, erratic uh, it's called the uh, marijuana or the the cannabis eradication program mm -hmm. well guess what there's thousands of plants in an acre like in a canadian farmer and they're making about four hundred twenty dollars an acre for just growing it, but the, but the DEA gets a dollar five per plant. They're making so much money off of hemp being illegal. They say that ninety nine percent of everything the DEA is bringing in is feral hemp. Only one percent is actual smoked marijuana. Right. So and they're just inflating they their numbers for the dollars. The it's all about money, for them especially. Just you know, all the money. we're we're going to. Uh, uh, go off. We've got a couple other things to show on our show, but I assure you we'll be playing the trailer for this some more, and we'd like to have you out here as a guest if you're ever out here on uh, the West got Coast. It. We've got Michael Henning on the phone. He is the director of this new film, uh, Hempsters Plant the Seed, with Woody Harrelson and Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard. Uh, Ralph and Nader, Julia Butterfly. It comes out uh, June 28th, Aubrey, next Tuesday. One of our heroes. It'll be so out there. Tell our, and it's going to be on iTunes and, and what other media outlets can they pick well, this up through? All digital, all digital media and all the uh, DVD medias. And if anybody wants to show it in their city, contact Cinema Libre Studios 
and we can bring it to your town. We can bring hemp beer, hemp wine, hemp seed all over the popcorn. We have a theatrical version of this that includes the products that you can eat and, and you know have a, as a part. And of there's the some extras on the DVD, including an alternative intro and extended scenes and uh, ten reasons why hemp is the solution. So there's a lot more to see here. Oh yeah. So uh, let us know if you want us to come to <coughs> town, and we'll show it in your independent theaters and bring all the hemp merchandise. And what's the best website for that? Well, ours is hempsterthemovie.com, and you can also go to cinemalibrestudios.com. The distributor is Cinem Cinema Libre, and uh, all the information on the film is on hempsterthemovie.com. Well, Michael, it is a real pleasure talking to you, and we'll be talking some more in the very near future. It's good to hook yeah. back up with you, you again, bro. Work, Paul. You know, we got to share some good herb when you were here in the Northwest, and I, I look forward to doing that again sometime soon. All right. Thanks, Thanks. Paul. Bye Take bye. Care. Okay. Cool. That's Michael Henning, the new movie Hempsters Plant the Seed. Definitely can't it's wait for him to get out here. Out. <laughs> so. Uh, I was going to actually uh, share with you a little bit more about what we're going to be doing this weekend for the please. Octa. There's, there's some other things we haven't talked about yet. Uh, an attempt to increase the fee for Oregon medical marijuana patients. I know oh you're going to be speaking at a protest of this fee increase that they're proposing for. Uh, Oregon medical marijuana patients. Yeah, um, a lot of us have been following the, the fee increase that's been going on with medical marijuana patients, and I, I would call it a very, very mild win. They did lower the low income from 200 back down to 100, but Instead since of 20, 20 now, that's still a 500% increase. Will the, the low income people's growers still have to pay $200 too? That is still in the works that yes, they are. Now, one of the things that a lot of the people now, following We're hoping this, to stop this, but that's- I was that's, gonna say a lot of the people following this don't necessarily understand. So the quick recap of what's going on here, the Senate voted to spend the money that, um, <laughs> that these fee increases would bring in, but there's no actual bill that creates these fee increases. That's going to be done by the uh, Oregon Medical Marijuana Program or Oregon Health Authority via administrative rules. So that being said, um, these still could change. Even though this did pass the House on Friday, it's quite likely that the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program could, if they choose to, implement a different fee structure. It's also possible, although unlikely, that the governor could uh, veto it. It's possible that they may implement some combination of these fees, like maybe a slight increase. And one of the things that uh, various activists are pushing for right now is to add PTSD because that's going to generate more revenue as well. So there's different ways that this could be addressed. But right now, what we're looking at is a $200 annual fee for all cardholders. Which holders, is a 100% increase for, 100% for full increase. income people. An additional $200 fee for growers that are not patients themselves. And then the low income uh, SSI will stay at 20, but there's only a small portion of people that are on OMMP that qualify with OS or SSI currently. The remaining people that qualify for low income with food stamps and OHP will be bumped up to $100 per year instead of the 20 that So that's the proposal paying. from the Oregon health budget and the, the uh, it's, it hasn't been fully implemented yet. Though. Right. There's still going to be some discussions. There's still going to be They have to implement administrative rules, I know. And then um, we're having a rally downtown Portland, Pioneer Square, this Sunday. Um, Bob Wolf of OMPI has organized this rally to help bring the patient community together and make a united front against these fee increases. Is that, and where? that is going to be at Pioneer Square from 3 to 6.30. Okay. Um, I will be speaking there, as you said, al along with uh, Bob Wolf and many other people. Steph Scherer from ASA will be speaking there. Um, I don't know the whole lineup, but quite a few of us are going to be speaking about these fee increases, about the raids that have been threatened and the one raid that has occurred in Oregon. Um, and I will be talking about the OCTA as well as, as our proposed solution for how we deal with these. Um, and there's going to be an announcement about another proposed uh, initiative effort that will be made on Sunday. Then Saturday, we have another event that we're going to be doing in Seaside. Um, Angela Fairless, who you had on the show a few weeks back. Yeah, um, and who does a fashion activist. show at our Hempstock Festival the right. last couple right. of years. She has organized what she's calling the Clatsop County Community Conversation on Cannabis. And Lee Berger, myself, Anthony Johnson, Jim Clark, and, and Angela will be there along with um, Nick from Nature's Choice, which is one of the new dispensaries slash patient resource centers that have opened up out there in that region that's kind of prompted the need for this conversation. And, and the goal is to have 
have the public and patients all come out and kind of talk about what these organizations provide, what the different options in moving forward are, which again, ACTA legalization is one of those options. Um, Lee, I, I believe, will be talking about some of the legalities in question here. And the idea is to open up that conversation out there along the coast where there's a lot of confusion about what is legal and what isn't. One of my favorite things about that region is Sheriff Bergen, who I watched at a convention last year say that patients were allowed to have 28 ounces and he's a sheriff <laughs> and it's 24 ounces. <laughs> so that was an intro. I mean, there's, there's clearly confusion if the people that are enforcing the law aren't quite sure what it is either. So we really need to be educating people talking about what is legal, what isn't, and kind of ironing out some of those kinks. And so the it's great you're doing sure. those two events there, one in Seaside and one here in Portland. The Portland one's at Pioneer Courthouse Square. Yes, 3 at what to 6.30 on three, Sunday. 3 to 6.30 on Sunday the 26th. And the one tomorrow is at Seaside from 12 to 3 at the City Hall there. All right, we have a telephone call. Uh, welcome to our show, caller. Hello, Paul. It's Janelle Howdy. Farmer. Hello, Paul and Jen and Tim. Good evening. Just calling to uh, wish you much success for Octa 2012. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just to let you know, Legalized Cannabis International is... Uh, is this J.L. Farmer? Farmer? Oh, yeah. Well, welcome, yes, J.L. I didn't yes. know that was you at first, but when you said that moniker for... Legalized Cannabis yes. International with your English accent. Yes. Of course we knew. Are you yes. in, in Britain or are you in Morocco or where are you at today? Oh, no, down here in Morocco. <laughs> okay. Yes. I think you're the farthest <laughs> caller to call our show yet. Yeah, Germany was yes. about the furthest up well, to Germany now, and Morocco, was, Morocco about the far. same. I don't know. Nice to finally hear your voice, JL. Yeah, and you, Jen, too. I, I, I'll speak very slowly so that you can understand my UK British English accent. Oh, it's, we <laughs> so, we recognize it. We got yeah, you we guys like on our, uh, running <laughs> all our good. television shows. You well, know. Roman on the show. Yeah. Roman Price is from Leeds, so you know you two should yeah. say hello. Well, it's uh, it's nearly quarter to five in the morning here in Morocco, and it's it's still almost a hundred degrees. Oh, oh wow! Oh, wow. Well, very, I hope you've got air hot. conditioning. No, no we, we've got fans. We've got about five, you know, floor stands, and they work fine for us. It's it's okay. Uh -huh. And we've been here for about ten years now. It's a dry so heat, I think, in, right? Yeah, it's great. It's really it's the, it's the best climate in all of Morocco. It's brilliant. Right on. <laughs> and of course, uh, being so, in Morocco, we're, we're not allowed to go outside and campaign in any way. Right. Right. You know, there's, there's very strict drug laws in Arab in the Arab world. But still, there's huge uh, hash fields in Morocco that... Uh, I know, the, it's enormous. In right. the north of the country, in the Rift Mountains, it's just a, an enormous area. Uh -huh. uh, but they are clamping down, you know, because of uh, U.S. federal pressure. And practically every, every week, there's, you know, press reports of you know, like literally hundreds of tons that, that, that are confiscated and destroyed. Wow. Well, but, JL, uh, I know you've so also we, been active in uh, working to boycott Malaysia for their penalties to execute people for minor amounts, 250 grams or more of cannabis, and they execute dozens of people every year for cannabis possession only. Isn't that true? Oh, Paul, every week, every week I add maybe two, three, four names to the database that I maintain. And they, the when they sentenced them to hang, I remember there was a case of a Olympic bicyclist from Malaysia who was arrested and the judge told him, this is a couple of years ago, that he had a great appellate case, but he was hung within 24 hours, wasn't he? He was hung the same evening. His name was uh, Ramli, Ramli Kasron. Uh -huh. and when he was sentenced to death that morning, the judge told him that he still had avenues for appeal, and yet the judiciary completely ignored his right of appeal, and they hung him the same evening. Wow. And, and I the remember there was that family just about two months ago, three months ago, the husband and the wife and some other gentleman, yeah. and then they, the yeah. lady was saying from the dock after they sentenced her to die, you know, she told her children she was going to come home to take care of them. Yeah, I know. That's and you really know, when I, I, saw your, I saw your video in January when was it at um, one of the Washington uh, rallies? Then you spoke out, 
And I was so pleased, Paul, that, you know, you, you, you spoke out about Malaysia at that rally and, you know, bringing more people into understanding that all of these um, capital um, laws in Asia are a direct result UK and US prohibition laws. Yeah. You know, and the way that we can help to put an end to these death sentences in Malaysia and Indonesia and Thailand is to work for cannabis legalization in our own countries. Correct. I mean, I, I, I don't have an own country because I'm here in Africa. So my way of contributing to the international campaign is to work with the group Legalized Cannabis International. And that's a group that you founded, have... right? Yeah, that, yeah. That you've and been, it's, and it's we've been enough. involved in it. Jennifer and I both have been a couple of uh, right. advocates you're, on you're behalf the, of Legalized yeah. Cannabis International, or LCI. The Oregon. That's right. You're the officer for Oregon, and Jennifer is the co-officer. So we're proud the group to, is just an, to just work an with umbrella. you on that. It's an umbrella group that people can come in and they can be our officers and they can push their initiatives. And we've, we've got more than 3,000 members and all of the major people connected with the cannabis legalization movement. What is the best our- website, JL, for, for your, to find out about Legalized Cannabis International and the uh, move to boycott Malaysia? Okay, the website address is www legalizeinternational.com and neat. when you arrive there at the very top of the home page then people can see the boycott malaysia uh, A symbol link from and legalize you just click on, just click on that and it will take you to the page legalizeinternational.com all right and um, as i say we're an umbrella group we invite everybody to come in and push their initiatives within the group because we've got a big audience of people mm-hmm. No, I know you've been working for Swiss activist Bernard Rapaz and yeah. many other causes. So I really thank you for calling. We've got to have you back yeah, on more often. Yeah, lovely to speak with you, Paul. And best wishes, Jen, campaign manager. Thank you. And great music, Tim. Great music. Thank you so great. much. And I don't know All if right. you All saw this new video from Reason TV with Lindy called No Knock Raid, but we're going to play that now. So it's really good to have you on the okay. phone. As We fade into that. I want to emphasize that this video shows graphic, frightening, horrifying film of police kicking in the doors of people who, they were at the wrong house. They kicked in the door with SWAT teams in a no-knock raid in several of these, and you were going to watch the police kill people, innocent people, in their home with no weapons. So uh, if that kind of thing bothers you as it bothers me you might not want to see some of this but uh, this is a new video that just came out with the 40th anniversary of the implementation of President Richard Nixon's drug war which uh, we just passed the 40th anniversary last week so thank you for coming on JL and this is No Knock Raid I'm always with you thank you JL bye 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 it's good to be united in We have increased the amount of money for handling the problem of dangerous drugs sevenfold. It will be $600 million this year. More money will be needed in the future. I want to say, however, that despite our budget problems, to the extent money can help in meeting the problem of dangerous drugs, it will be available. This is one area where we cannot have budget cuts because we must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one in the United States, the problem of dangerous drugs. It's a no-knock raid. Don't be afraid. We'll shoot your dogs in front of your kids. Cause we are the SWAT. We're here for your part and all the cash that you've got. We are adrenaline junkies taking orders from the top. KGB and the DEA, they'll 
I'll make you disappear like in Guantanamo Bay In the middle of the night, you'll have nothing to say If we get the wrong address, it doesn't matter anyway We'll still get our kicks, we'll still have our fun Yeah, we are the SWAT, we are adrenaline junkies Till the drugs are all gone It's a no-knock raid This is a war, and this is your fate We are the face of your new police state We are the law, and we've got the guns Statutory power, mandatory minimums We are the SWAT, we're here for your part And all the cash that you got We are adrenaline junkies taking orders from the czar It's a no-knock raid, don't be afraid Paramilitary police state on parade It's a no-knock raid, don't be afraid Less crime, and it's a no knock raid. It's a no knock raid. Don't be afraid. Paramilitary police state on parade. Flash bang on the ground. Don't hear a sound. Could be you, could be the mayor. And it's a no knock raid. It's a no knock raid. Don't be afraid. So that last scene was the murder of a Iraqi war veteran, 29-year-old man in Arizona. He had worked 12 hours. He got off two hours before he was murdered. The police were at the wrong house, and they shot him 27 times. He was asleep on his couch. They kicked in his door and shot him 27 times. And so that's just the horror of the drug war. And that's one of the many things we're trying to work against with our efforts to end adult marijuana prohibition and restore industrial hemp. So we have an initiative petition that's in circulation to regulate the legal sale of marijuana and take money out of the hands of the drug cartels and put it in the hands of legal businesses that are regulated and allow industrial hemp to be cultivated by farmers and reorient our economy toward a natural cycle and away from the synthetic cycle as Gatewood Galbraith has taught us. So for find out more about that, go to Cannabis Tax Act dot o r g that's cannabis tax act dot o r g would you like to say anything about the petition drive um only that we need your help that you know if if you uh if you even have just a very brief amount of time that you can devote to this effort all of that helps some people say that they don't have time but it doesn't take very much time when you're sitting in a room with your friends have them sign your petition when you go to a concert, you won't believe how many signatures you can get just while standing in line. You know, <laughs> There's we, plenty of opportunity. We are running out of time here, but we do have a telephone caller who's been standing by. Welcome to the show, caller. 
Hi, Paul. Hi, Tim. This Howdy. is Lynn from Tim the is, Hamstock Committee. Just hey, want to Lynn. remind all Tim of our Tim has jumped over to his musical chair and about to perform about. Yep, with uh, Mickey Davis and to Roman Price. But what? how are you doing, Lynn? Thanks for calling. No problem. We want all our volunteers to come down to Kelly Point Park on Sunday high noon. We're going to have our volunteer picnic, and we want all of you, golly, all you volunteers to come on down. So the hemp stock is coming up on September 10th and 11th, and uh, thanks for reminding our, our viewers of that. No problem. Have a good evening. Thank you, Lynn. So we are running out of time. I want to thank you all for watching. Find out more about our petition, and to find out more about the Hempstead World Music Festival, go to HempsteadWorldMusicFestival.com. We're going to jump over to Nikki Davis, Roman Price, and Tim Pate for the last minute and a half so they can sing a great song. How are you folks ready to go? Absolutely. I want to remind our viewers to tune in next week. We're not going to have a live show next week. We will have a tape show next week, but we will be back live, I think it's the 9th of, uh, of July. So stay tuned and help tune in next week and help us restore hemp. Good night. And thanks for being on, Jennifer.